Okay guys, so we're back again with a new video and people have been waiting for this for a long time. I'm just going to give you the once over on some of our creations. You guys know this is again the hardest rainbow loom bracelet which is the double cross double starburst. Then we went along and made the triple. Here's the single cross double starburst and of course the quadruple starburst. You guys have seen all of those. We got our American flag starburst bracelet. You've seen that. You guys have watched a ton. Here we made a sailor pinstripe. You know, I think actually this was the uh, the one loom version that Justin's Toys put out. Check it out. I'll put a link down there for you to their page because we also did the snake belly that they posted as well, which is a really cool design, really tough to do, and. Uh, a lot of force behind this one, so be careful with that one, of course, if you do it. We're going to put a link down to Justin's Toys. they got some great stuff on their videos. Zigzags. Here's our fish scale bracelet that Morgan designed. you got the video on that. Of course, our gloves. We've done the original. And for some reason, a lot of people want to see this on somebody's hand. Apparently, they haven't done that. So, Morgan, here, come check this out. While I show them the rest of them, go ahead and put that one on. And here's the spirit bracelet we did. You know, for, you know, if you want to do names and stuff like that. Another double. Here's our charms, our coin charms that we came up with. Here's some starbursts that we've done. This is the one I wear all the time. And some of the other typical rainbow loom patterns and stuff. There's that, you know, double braid. Okay, and then Morgan, you can go ahead and put your hand in front of the camera there so people can see the glove on you. There you go. Go ahead and slide your hand into this one here. Okay, wiggle your fingers. There you go. Alright guys, so now that that's been shown to you, you've seen all our stuff that we've done so far, you've watched all the videos. I promise you, you have seen nothing like this before. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this down a little bit. Point that down. And I'm going to bring this in front. So you can see the culmination of 9,000 rubber bands on the rainbow loom. To make the one and only, nothing else in the world... Rainbow Loom Santa Claus hat. Let's go ahead and pull the camera up here so you can get a better look at it. Ladies and gentlemen, there it is. We've posted a picture of it on Facebook so people could get a view of it, see what it looked like. We've worked extremely hard on this for the past couple of weeks. We have over 50 hours of time into making this as well as 9,000 rubber bands. So, if you're interested in making this, continue watching the video, spread the word, but I will tell you, it takes a lot out of you. If, you know, for one, you know, I've been told that, you know, in Australia, a pack of the bands cost $4.99. We paid an average of $5.99, so we paid $6 a bag. It used 15 bags. So it was like $85 in rubber bands that we spent. Something like that. Might even be more now. I don't even know. But I think it's $85 we spent on rubber bands. The white rubber bands do glow in the dark. And it's basically tied through the top, which is kind of self-explanatory. Get it up there as best you can. Doesn't take much learning for that. The only bands that are holding it together are the three C-clips down here that are holding the triple together. And there's actually one band, no, maybe two bands in the top holding this entire piece together. So, let me explain that while you're making this, because of the way it's made, if you lose one of these, it starts to come apart. The whole entire piece comes apart. So, if you're worried about that, I really suggest you not make this. Because I have about six hours of just fixing where... I've lost one of the rubber bands and it peeled apart. And I think I have some footage of that that you'll see during the course of it. But basically, you just stop what you're doing. The rubber bands are going to stop. 
and you find out where it stopped and then you cap off that piece and then put it all back on the loom and get it going again. But there it is, ladies and gentlemen, the very first and the one and only Rainbow Loom Santa hat. And we're going to start out making the band that goes around the, uh, the hat. And it's going to require six looms. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, could you do this with less? Absolutely. But it will take you a long time. Because I'm going to do... The band that goes around the hat is actually going to be a triple starburst using red and glow in the dark. And I need to do this six times. So I'm going to do this section. Then I'm going to do it, take it off, add it to it, do it again, take it off, add it to it, take it again. This is going to be six of these. So it's basically going to be, it, let's just say that you have three looms. Okay, if you have three looms, you'll have to do it 12 times. So, it is going to be a huge project. Okay guys, so here is the first one loaded up and ready to go. So, I'm going to do this, and then i got to do it five more times. So, that's it. So, we're going to start down here at this end, start bringing forward. Tie off these ends, pull it all off the loom, reload it, put that back on, and it's going to keep on going. So I'll get back with you here in a couple days. <laughs> Take care. Okay, so we got the first section completed, ready to come off of the loom. Remember, we cap off each band. So when you do the triple, you should have nine. And then you're going to be putting nine pieces back on. But now, there's one difference in this, is because we're going to do six of them. So this is one end, so when you start back up, you're going to continue to go straight across. You're not going to do it the same way you did before by finishing off an end down here. You're just going to go straight, straight up. Because you're going to continue, you're going to put onto this, and then you're going to continue to go straight. So this end is going to look exactly like it is. And this end down here will look exactly like the other end. So this is one end, and then you're going to splice. Remember, we got to do this five more times. And it took me one hour to lay this all out. So you're going to have at least five hours of work into the band. And that's for, you know, a normal size child's head. So we'll, uh, we'll get back with you. I'm going to get it going. There's number one. Okay guys, I uh, got one section done, and I have to tell you that I was working on it last night, and I got really tired, and I started rushing it, and when I pulled it off the loom, I realized that, probably right about in here somewhere, that I missed a band, so it came apart. So I stopped it, rebuilt it, put it all back together, and started pulling it off the loom, got to about here. And I broke a rubber band, which took off that whole side. So I had to tear it all apart and redo it all again. So this piece right here has about, I don't know, maybe three and a half, four hours into it. So that being said, let's go to the loom. Now, if you guys have watched part three, or the triple, this is basically, you know, this is the exact same thing we're doing is making the triple. But the only difference is when you went to part two in the triple, you were you're ending it. So in this aspect, we're not ending it. So what we're going to do when we start, we have our arrows pointing away from us, as you see here. And the difference is, is we're going to take one step back and we're going to start our starburst patterns in our side pieces at the second peg. And the reason we're going to do that is because when we get to the end, here, let's turn this way. When we get to the end, you see that we line up correctly. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take that part and we're going to weave it onto, onto that. So if you want to watch how to do that in uh, the triple, it goes over it in really good detail. I'm not going to go over it for this aspect of it, so you can watch the triple bracelet to learn how to do that. But, you know, that's exactly what we're doing that here for. So the fact that we're going... Uh, 
so deep with these, I would go ahead and leave the green bands on until you get it completely done. Because if you pull this off and break it, then you have to redo that piece too. So don't take those green bands off until you're completely satisfied and have this one off of your loom. Alright, so I'll get back with you and show you when we're all done. Hey guys, so I started wrapping everything. And... Okay, so one of these pegs is not like the other. All these should be facing this way. But somehow, I got this one in there and didn't realize it until after the fact. So, what I've been doing is, you know, I'm doing the cross here. So, what I'm doing is I'm turning the hook in towards here, going down through all of those, hooking it, and bringing it up through the hole backwards. I'm mean, hooking it on. I don't know if you saw that or not, but that's how I've been doing it. So, just wanted to show you, you know, it's only one piece out of the whole thing. You know, it's fine down here, but somehow or another I got that one piece mixed up and pointing the wrong way. So, yes, I do make mistakes. Just wanted to show you that, and you don't have to worry about it because you can still work around it. So, just, you know, when you see these mistakes, just stop, think about it for a little bit, and then keep moving on. Alright, I'll get back with you. Okay, so here is, this is actually four pieces created with six looms of the triple starburst. So there's two, you know, basically two bracelets, a bracelet here and a bracelet here. And this is ultimately going to be wrapped around Morgan's head. So this is what we're creating the band of the Santa Claus hat with. And then we're going to go red, 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 up into the hat. So right now, this is what we've got. So, we'll get back with you and take a break. i got about five, six hours into this. There's our looms resting. Our pile of 600 rubber bands here and 600 rubber bands here is slowly diminishing. And yes, as you see, they are glow in the dark. Hey right, guys, we'll get back with you. Okay guys, so I just wanted to show you that... Uh, you know, I've gotten to this point, I've actually done three of these, and like I've stated before, you don't want to remove these bands until you're 100% sure that everything's put together, which, as you can see, it is put together, so it's time for me to take these bands off, and you should have nine of them, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go in here and you're going to find the pieces, or the end caps, and then you just pull them the opposite direction. Now, if they want to give you a fit, then you can always cut them. But I would prefer to use them later. You know, you don't. I don't put them on there super tight. But just tight enough to hold down. You know, I just cut off all my fingernails, so... Of course, I'm going to have a hassle with them. And remember, you use the, uh, you know, you use... Now, we have three, we've made three of these. So, I'm using six looms, as you know, and you very well could use three. You would just have to add more together. So, right now, I've done this three times, so that's a total of six sections, because each section I'm doing, because I have six looms, has two pieces. So, two, four, six. And ultimately... What I did is I measured around Morgan's head at the biggest spot, and that's what I'm working towards. So I actually, you know, I don't want to make it super tight, so I only need another, another one, two, three, three and a half inches. 
So what I'll do is I'll figure out how many starbursts go into three and a half inches, and that's how much that I need to add. And then what I'll do is I'll go to here at three and a half inches, and we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces. So I have eight pieces that get to three and a half inches. And I, so that means I'm only going to count up eight starbursts, and that's all I'm going to do. And then I'm going to end it off at that, and then I'll be finished. So I'll get that going, and I'll get back with you, and then we'll have the band done. So stick with me. Okay, guys, so as I said before, we only needed eight more starbursts to equal three and a half inches. And that three and a half inches that we're talking about isn't uh, stretched. It's three and a half inches. Let's see if I can get this stabilized a little bit. So it's three and a half inches where, when it's loose. So one, two, three, four, five six seven eight eight goes to three and a half inches so remember we're going to be tying into the looms at the end where you build to so we need to count back and you're not going to count the very first one because that's going to be the end of your starburst okay so you're going to go one two three four five six seven eight okay so that's going to be the center of your starburst so you're going to go ahead one spot and that's where you're going to be starting so remember you got to skip every other peg and you're not going to start on the last peg so you're going to skip the last peg so this is your end this is where your last starburst will start before that one and then you're gonna start there that's your first or well one of your that's where your starburst is gonna end so that's gonna be number one remember you're counting backwards number two then three four five six seven eight and then that's the center of your starburst so you're gonna come ahead one and then that's where you're gonna start So then you just put your band there, and that's where you're going to start. So you got your place marked. Alright, so I'm going to get it built, and get it set up, and I'll get back with you. Okay, just to give you the rundown, when we, uh, you know, we counted eight back, and then we started our line. So what we do at that point, since we know we're ending here, we're going to take the red band, Start on this one, go to here, and then all the way up, and then the red band goes over, and then we go over to this center one, take a red band over here and over here, and then over here we take a red band over here and over here. Then we put our cross in here, and then we go this way and this way, just like in all the other videos. Then we go to this cross over here and over here, and all the way down, and then this point all the way down, and then we build our starbursts. And then we go back and hook everything, which is where I'm at right now. So I hook this one side. We're always hooking and placing from left to right. Okay. So when we're doing it this way, we're moving everything over from left to right. Then when we flip everything around, we're doing it from left to right. So I've hooked this line of singles over here. And now I'm hooking the cross. And when you get to this center... You know, I came up here and I hooked this side. I got to this point and I hooked from here over to the middle. And then I'm doing my cross in the same way. I get to the end of my cross. And then I'm going to go in here and I'm going to hook this one to here. Then I'm going to go down here and get this one. Take it to the middle. And I'm going to come over here and take this one over to the middle. I okay, hope you saw that one. And then what we're going to do when we come back to the end here is we're going to do that cross all the way up, just like in the previous videos. Then when we get to here, we're going to move that one over to there. And then we're going to move that one over to there. And then we're going to hook our last one. And then we're going to finish off the end with two of the red bands 
to hook it. Okay guys, so our band is done. And to fit Morgan's head, it had to be 20 and a half inches. And it's 20 and a half inches. So, from this point, I will tell you that I used one bag of glow-in-the-dark and one bag of red, plus I had to take out some more red on this one. Not many, maybe like 30 or 40 more. So, in just this band alone, we have over 1,200 bands. Or in just the strap that goes around the head, we have over 1,200 rubber bands. So... I will get back with you and tell you what's next and what we're going to be doing is basically adding pieces to do the top of the hat. Just like you would in the glove video where we're going to take each section of the loom and we're going to add triples all the way up. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to make a wall of triples, however high we're going to make it, and then we're going to curve that all together and stitch it on the back side. So I'll get back with you after it's all done. Okay guys, so for part two of the Santa Claus hat, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making the top part. And this is going to be similar to the glove. If you haven't watched the video, you can watch it right over here. I'll go ahead and put the annotation right there. So click on that, learn how to make the glove. But basically what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to loom up you know, this whole entire piece with the red. And what I have is I have th or four looms here. So I've taken two of them off, set them off to the side. There's four looms here. Just one, one high. And I'm going, they're all the same length. And I'm going to stitch them all the way up. And then I'm going to put the cross pieces that are going to cover four bands. But I'm only going to cover three here. And then four, or probably I'll just do three. We'll see. I might just do three and then stitch them together that way. But I'm going to go ahead and load this loom up. And then I'm going to put each piece on here going between each one of the starburst sections. So where you see a section there, that's what I'm going to go in between. So I'm going to first get this loaded up. And then I'll turn the camera back on so you can see how I'm going to piece that on there. So I'll get back with you. Okay, so what we got now is... We've created, you know, we point the arrows away or the horseshoes going up. So it looks like U's on all of the looms. Then we load up a whole row of singles. And then once you load up the row of singles, what I do is I turn it around. I turn the whole thing around. Because what I'm going to do is this is going to be placed across here. And I do it this way so I can figure out how I'm going to be doing things. So this is one end of the band. And I'm going to connect these pieces here. Let me show you where I can see it. So what I'll do is where the looms come apart, I'll probably start right here, where the starburst comes, I'm going to take that piece right in there and I'm going to hook it over top of the loom. And then I'm going to go to the next section of the starburst pull that apart sometimes the hook works great here and so on and so forth so just like that and keep hooking that oh, did I miss a piece? nope, I got it same thing here Hook a piece there. You know, again, being careful that you don't break it. Don't force it. Okay, so then we got that part hooked up to it, and what I've done is I've started here, and the bands that go across, it might be hard to see because I'm using red for everything, because the top of the Santa Claus hat is typically red. I mean, you can do any color you want, 
but I'm making this as a Santa Claus hat. So I take the first band and I go over two. And that's, you know, as far as this is concerned, every row is going to include three bands. Okay, remember, three bands. So we're going to put two here, which is going to leave us one space there. Then we're going to go over three. Then we take another band and go over three, another band and go over three, another band and go over three. And we're going to end up here. And then we just add one loop here. And then this one loop will be the two when we go into the next section here. So when we put it all together, we're going to stitch this back up, and this band here is going to go over the first two pegs going this way. All right, so let me loom it all up, and I'll get back with you. Okay, so we got this piece added to it. And basically, you know, this is the beginning of the hat. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a full row all the way across of this piece here because what that's going to do is the band's going to go around your forehead and then you need this little bit of extra space to get the hat up off your head before you start tapering it in to uh, you know make it look like the the cone of the Santa Claus head so I'm going to go up one row you know or one set of looms which is done by you know filling up the whole loom here do the one set of looms and then I'm going to start tapering it in and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. But we're going to do one complete row. And remember, once we set up this one, these bands here that are sticking out are going to go over the first two pegs. So what you're going to do is you're going to load your loom up, then flip it around, put it on here, set these pieces across, and then finish across with your other ones. So once I get that loaded up, I'll get back with you so you can see how to do that part. And then I'll finish up this section. So I'll get back with you in a little bit. Okay, guys. So we're back now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next section on the starburst that we're going to be adding. And I'm going to go ahead and get that added down. And basically what I'm doing is I'm going in between each burst in the starburst pattern. Pretty simple. But again, you know, you'll want to be careful because, you know, again, this you're stretching a lot out here. Oop, I missed a piece there. So you don't want to break anything at this point in time. So that part's done. And now we have to add this part. So we got two pieces here that we're adding. Two pieces here. Two pieces here. Okay, now it's starting to get real tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at this point, make sure I got everything. So there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so I got all of them done. Now what I can do at this point is I can loom everything up to that point, and then I can take this off of here, releasing some of that stretch so I can finish this up. So what I'll do is I'll just hook up underneath here and move those up. But first, of course, we have to put the other bands on. So we'll go out three. Go out three. 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 And then one. And we'll go out three. And we're going from where the first one ends. Or the, you know, the last one ends. Three. Going over three. Over three. And then add your one. Because that one is what's going to make up for the two over here. And then we'll add three. Three. 
three, three, three more, and then one. And then we're going to loom. So I'm going to do this whole row here. And now make sure you hook the right bands on the ends. And then in these sections that have two of them coming in, you want to make sure you get that bottom band and that you don't get any of these cross bands. Because that will mess you up. And you just hook them on through here. Yeah. Now, let me see what will happen if I pull this off of here. Yeah, that releases some of the springiness, which it has. three some more just like so and then we just keep adding up and we can pull as we go up just to release some of the tension on this so let me get this all done and I'll get back with you Okay guys, so I got everything loomed up, tied up, everything up to the ends. When I get to the ends, I take my left over the middle, right over the middle, seal it off. Left over middle, right over middle, seal it off. Go to the next three, left over middle, right over middle, do that with four of them there. And then just getting ready to pull it off the loom. So again, work carefully though because you don't want to break your bands. Let me shut this down, and I'll turn it off, and I'm going to pull all this off very carefully, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, guys, so we finished up the band, and we finished up the top section, and this goes all the way across the loom, or all the way across the, uh, the hat. So then what I determined from that point, let me get these looms out of the way, is I determined the midpoint of the hat. So I determined the midpoint by counting how many triple singles I have, just by counting the bands on the end. And it came out that I have 29 of them all the way across. So once we figure out that we have 29, we know that the very middle of it will be the 15th band. So what I did, or the 15th section. So what I did is I put a double, double green there so I can differentiate that between all the other ones. And the very middle of that triple will be the, the one in the middle. Okay, so to go from the left side to the middle, and I always work left to right, just like you read a book. Okay, so when I go to the center, the 45th peg, or the 45th piece, will be the middle of the hat. Alright, so just remember the number 45. I don't have a pencil or anything around here. Now, keep in mind that when I told you about this, I started out, I had, what I have, three bags of red and three bags of glow-in-the-dark. Now I've only used one bag of the glow-in-the-dark, 
but I've used all three bags plus this bag over here is the fourth bag of red rubber bands. So I actually had to go buy more red rubber bands. And the first uh, place that I went to, they didn't have any red rubber bands. So it took me a while to find some more red ones, but I did. Unfortunately, they're not the newer ones. They are the older ones. And I had quite a problem with, you know, some of the older ones just not being good when they came out of the package. So we'll see if, uh, we'll see if any of the other packs, you know, are a little better. But, you know, again, as always, I only use the Rainbow Loom products. I don't use the other stuff. So, that being said, how do we figure out how we're going to do it? So, what I've determined is that each... Each single, we're going to go up by two to get to the center. And what that's going to do is that's going to put a taper to the hat. Instead of it coming together in a square and just kind of laying over and tying together and looking funny, we're going to start out and we're going to put these this section back on the loom. In the very first row, we're going to add two more rubber bands to. Because what we've determined is that if you go to the middle, and this requires a little bit of math, if we have 45, so each each section is going to go up by two. So the first section over here is going to have two. The second section is going to have four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, so on and so forth. Okay. So if you take the middle one, which is 45, you multiply it by two, you get 90. Now each section has 12, and if you take 90 and divide it by 12, so let's bring up my phone here. So, let's clear that off. You got 90 divided by 12. That comes out to be 7.5. So, you'll have 7.5 sections of the loom. You're going to have to do 7.5 times to get to your 90. So, each section then is approximately three inches long. It's actually two and three quarters inches. So we'll just say two and a half to be conservative. So you multiply this by 2.5 and you get 18 and three quarter inches. So with that being said, you know, once you figured that out, then you look and what I did is I took, you know, basically we'll just say 19, 18 and three quarters, 19 inches, and I held that up in the middle of Morgan's head and then let it hang down to the side. And we determined that that's going to be plenty long enough for the hat, for the longest part of it that's hanging down. If it's a little bit longer, it's okay because you're going to have some of the, uh, you know, some of the bulk of the hat. But hopefully, by adding this extra piece here, it will eliminate that. So I'm going to go ahead and get it all loomed up now. Looming it up is going to be, that's what's going to kind of be the tricky part because you're going to kind of have to do things a little backwards than what you're used to when you're using the rainbow loom. So remember, like I said, we're always working, for this point in time, we're going to be working left to right. Left to right, left to right, left to right, until we get to the middle, and then we're going to be working the opposite direction. Because everything is going to tie into this middle one. Okay guys, so since we're working from left to right, this is what we're going to have to do to determine how it's going to go on. So we're going to turn it with the, you know, the arrows pointing towards us, which is not the way you're going to start, but this is where you're going to hook onto it after you've loaded everything up. So what we're going to do is the end piece is going to have two bands on it. So we're going to count two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16. So this piece here is going to start out with 16 bands on it. So then, what we're going to do after we determine that, and I figured out that we need extra, okay? So this will be 16, 14, 12, and then smaller and smaller. So we'll eventually have to reconfigure our looms. But we're going to turn everything around. Of course, my looms are falling apart now since they're so worn out.
And from the end, we're going to count up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. All right, so here's where the 16th band is going to go. So we're going to put one band on, and we're going to put one band over, and then one band straight. So did you see that? We put one band, and then on the second peg, we're going to go over one to this side, and then we'll continue with our line all the way up, all the way to the very end. Let's go ahead and turn this sideways. Might be able to see a little better. So we got to our end, and just, you know, do a quick double check to make sure you have 16. So you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bands, okay? So we've got the 16 bands, and then from that next point, we're going to begin the next one. So you're going to put down one band, then the second band you're going to go angled to the next. And then we continue on with that. And remember, don't skip the one you went angled on. It's going to go, the first one's going to go to the side. And then the second band you're going to do is just going to go straight down. So you put down one band. And starting from the ending point of that band, you're going to go to the angle. To the side, to the next row. And then just continue on going all the way down to the end. So I'll get this loaded up and get back with you. Okay, before you get going too quick, uh, you know, one thing that I forgot is you're going to have to tie this into the next row. So make sure you put one single one down underneath of that first band because you're going to need that one to angle over to the next one. So if you haven't, you know, finished yet, then go back and put that Put that right back underneath of there, underneath of the 16th band. So make sure you do that. Okay, so just to recap, we have the one band down on the 16th placeholder, the end of the 16th band. Then we go over one. Stand up here. We go over one, then we put one angled. Then we go straight on down the line. Then we go to the next one, we put one down, one angled, straight on down the line. Next one, one down, one angled, and we're, you know, decreasing by two every time. And then we get down to where we're starting, which is the two bands, and we don't need to go over any because the cross bands are what's going to tie that together. Okay, guys, so I'll get back with you after we get it all loomed up. Or I'll get, actually, I'll do the cross bands, and then I'll get back with you. Okay guys, so from here, we're going to do it just like we did this piece, uh, this stuff here. So remember, we're working from the left to the right, just like how you read a book. And these pieces here are ultimately, this green band is going to come out, and each one of these strips is going to get put back on there. So the first three, the first triple single will go here, then the next triple single will go here, and the next triple single will begin here. Actually, you know what we should do is we should probably just go ahead and put on another row. So let's do that. We got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Yep, we'll go ahead and put on another row of uh, things there. I don't know how I got that all set up that way. Okay, I'll get back with you. Okay, so what I did is I just added, you know, reconfigured the loom, added another row. So there's 18 now instead of 16. 
because we're going up by two. So I got my extra band here, and then this row has 18 in it, and then the 16 row, 14 for 13, or 14, 12, you know, so on and so forth. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to come over to here, and then get this stuff all moved around so we can fit that rainbow looms and rubber bands everywhere. Okay. So, when we cross here, we're going to want to leave one over here to tie off to. So, you're going to start with two. And then you're going to go across three. Across three. Just like you did on the other part. Across three. And then you're going to go over two. Which means you're going to have one left to tie into the next row. Just remember that, okay? So you always want to encompass three into each one. So if we only have two, then we need to add one more row over here. And we'll tie that in when we go further because we will have to reconfigure the loom and everything. So, again, we'll go back over here. Put two. Then we'll go over three. Three. And three and two. Now keep in mind, you know when we did this one, we left that extra ring over here when we were doing this. And we left that extra ring over there because we ended with three. So we added the extra ring so we can add two more to it. The goal is when you do this you want each piece to encompass three singles. Just like a triple single. So you may have to dictate certain ways to do that. So if we're starting with two, that's leaving us one extra over here, which is what we want. But it may not work out the way we get over here. So just remember when you get to this point, you know there's two, so you got to add one more. If there was three and it ended, then you'd have to add an extra. If, there, if it ended with one, then you have to add two more. So it just depends on what the bands end with as opposed to what you're going to tie it to. Okay? So then we're going to go back to the, this side, and we're going to start with two, and then we're going to go over three, over three, over three, and over two. Now, what are we going to do next? Now, the way I have this is... You know, I have it where this this piece that's going over is going to close off this side, and it's going to taper it over. So, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to go over one point. Or actually, you can even leave that as a loop. On that corner. And then you'll go over three. Actually, no, let's do it this way. And we'll put it like that. We'll go over just a point. And then what that'll do is that'll just ultimately keep it out of the way. And then we'll go over three. Go over three. Go over three. Go over two. And then we'll put another one here. Go over three. Go over three. Over three. Over two. Now, to keep our same pattern going, now we're going to be losing one here. It's a bad band. So, to keep the same pattern going, you know, you just want to leave that one piece sticking out. Actually, let's see. We have two on that side. Now 
No, actually, I messed that up. So let's go back to this first one here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it over to 3. Of course, it has to be under here. And take that down to 2. Do that there. So that incorporates 3, but we have 1 extra. And we'll put that right there. Okay. And then that will that'll leave us with one extra. So same thing here. Go over three. And ultimately all I'm doing is just trying to keep the same pattern going. Because when it comes time to finish this, you're gonna wanna want you're going to want to want one extra piece on each end. So there'll be one extra piece here, and then one extra piece ultimately on the other end that we're going to go to. So if you loom it out this way, because it'll be an even area, it should work out for you. So let me get this line back up, and then I'll come in and I'll show you in detail what I did. Okay, now that you have this, you want to get every piece that you put on this band into this which will consist of six pieces so if you kind of run it along underneath of there and look on the back side wrap that around then you have all the pieces that you put on there and where you're going to put all these pieces is you're going to splice them into the middle section of your first one so you stretch it out, get them on there, and you look from the underside, make sure you got them all, you can stretch it out and make sure, okay so you know the top one, and this is going to be kind of the moment of truth, you know. I use a pair of tweezers that I've showed you before. You know, just something that's smooth that you can get under there. Okay. So, you know, I got the band loose. And what I want to do is just take a look down there to make sure all of the bands are connected. And they are, and then I pull that out of there. So, I've got them all set up. Now we remember, you know, if you've done this correctly, what you're going to do is you're going to get the first piece that goes over here. And the other end of it. And just hang on to it. This one went down first. Hold on to that, put that piece back on there, grab these, and put those back on there. Oh, so I did tie this one incorrectly, so that's my middle piece. So what I'll do is I'll pull that off of there. that back on here hook that up here okay so ultimately what I've done if I've just repositioned my triples sorry I'm paying attention to that and not watching the screen I uh, just repositioned my triples back on the loom and I'm going to do the same thing with the next group for the next one, two, three, one, two, three. 
next three sections. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so I'm going to do that, and then I'll get back with you. Okay, so just a tip that I want to give you. Before you go ahead and add these other ones, go ahead and loom this up a couple pieces. So that way something's helping you hold that down so you don't accidentally pull it off. So you put the three pieces on, go ahead and loom up two rows. And then you're going to put these pieces on, loom up two rows, put these pieces on, loom up two rows. And then that just helps keep it tied down to the loom so you don't accidentally pull it off while you're trying to work with the other pieces. So I'll get this done and get back with you. Okay, so something that I realized is when you start to put this back on the loom, you need to take this bottom row of cross pieces off. So these cross pieces here, you have to put them off, take them off. And then what you're going to do is you're going to put down, you know, the part of the hat that's already done, put your pieces on, then you're going to have to pick up each individual top band because you want this cross piece to be sandwiched in between the pieces that are going up. So you put this down and then what you're going to do, and what I found is actually two of the hooks help a lot better than one because you can hook one piece, hook the top piece, lift it up, hook the cross piece, put it down, put that back on. Then you're not have to fumble around with your fingers. And then just make sure you have good skills with your hooks. This splice is actually a little bit more tricky than I thought. It's trickier than some of the other ones that I've done. So I'll get it finished and get back with you. Let me try to see if I can set the camera up where you can see actually what I'm doing. It's going to kind of be tough. I got it sucked to a can here. to see it or not. Got an idea. Be right back with you. Okay, so let's get these pieces on here. And we're going to do it by getting them all hooked up here. So none of them come apart on me. Give them a tug, make sure we got them all. Looks like we did. Oh, look, you see that there? Looks like we did not hook this last piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that in my hook as I pull the band off. And this is where, like I said, the two hooks comes in handy. Uh-oh. 
Where'd my other band go? So, there you go. So, you saw what I did. You know, the one band came loose. I don't know if you saw it or not. I may have blocked it or knocked it out of the frame, but one band came loose, and I ended up catching it before it went anywhere. So, now this one here is our middle section. Try to do your best to keep it under some tension so it doesn't fall apart on you like it just did to me. And I actually think I'm... You know, I hooked it all over the same way. Knowing I was going to end up doing this, but I think what I ultimately ended up doing was flipping it the wrong direction. I should have flipped it the other way when I started re everything, so it's just going to make it a little bit harder for me. But that's okay. But what you're going to do here is, once you've got your pieces back on the loom, then you're going to take your hook, and you're going to find the top section of the next piece over, and take it off, and put a band down, and hook it back on. And then just pull this around with your hook. And then take your second hook, and make sure I'm in the frame, and go to the next piece that you have to get, get the top band, move it over, hook it back down. Of the top piece, if it comes loose, hold on to it. You know, typically they're not going to bust off and go flying anywhere because they're not under a lot of pressure. Okay, and you do it just like that. Now I need to do one more. And, you know, this is where the, the difficulty gets in with doing these big projects like this. Okay, so just hang on to that. Put your, oh, dropped it. Put your band down. Get it hooked back up. And put it back on. And the last section over here, let's make sure I'm in the frame so you can see it. Hold on to it. Put it back on. And hook it back up. Okay. So there we have all of our pieces hooked back on. And then we're going to loom up just like we would do normally. And let me get the camera set back up and I'll show you that. Okay, so let's get these pieces on here. And we're going to do it by getting them all hooked up here. So none of them come apart on me. Looks like I got them all. Put them on one of the loom holders. Give them a tug, make sure we got them all. Looks like we did. See that there? That looks like we did not hook this last piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get 
that in my hook as I pull the band off. And this is where, like I said, the two hooks comes in handy. Uh-oh. Yep, there you go. So you saw what I did. You know, the one band came loose. I don't know if you saw it or not. I may have blocked it or knocked it out of the frame, but one band came loose and I ended up catching it before it went anywhere. So now this one here is our middle section. Try to do your best to keep it under some tension so it doesn't fall apart on you like it just did to me. And I actually think I'm... You know, I hooked it all over the same way. Knowing I was going to end up doing this, but I think what I ultimately ended up doing was flipping it the wrong direction. I should have flipped it the other way when I started relooming everything, so it's just going to make it a little bit harder for me. But that's okay. But what you're going to do here is, once you've got your pieces back on the loom, then you're going to take your hook and you're going to find the top section of the next piece over and take it off and put a band down and hook it back on. And then just pull this around with your hook. And then take your second hook, let me make sure I'm in the frame, and go to the next piece that you have to get, get the top band, move it over, hook it back down. Of the top piece, if it comes loose, hold on to it. You know, typically they're not going to bust off and go flying anywhere because they're not under a lot of pressure. Okay, and you do it just like that. Now I need to do one more. And, you know, this is where the, the difficulty gets in with doing these big projects like this. Okay, so just hang on to that. Put your, oh, dropped it. Put your band down. Get it hooked back up. And put it back on. And the last section over here, let's make sure I'm in the frame so you can see it. Hold on to it. Put it back on. And hook it back up. Okay. So there we have all of our pieces hooked back on. And then we're going to loom up just like we would do normally. And let me get the camera set back up and I'll show you that. Okay guys, so we're gonna, we're back now, we're gonna get these pieces loomed up. So we got the two section here, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna loom up. Where's that band? There it is. Loom up to that piece. And then when you get to the cross piece, cross it over to there. Okay. Initially starting out, you know, put those over, that over, 
that one over, and then cross it over. You go up your rows. And hang on, let me uh, stop this. So remember to lock everything in. Just get your rows here. You may have to hold the loom down. Likes to pull apart with all this tension on it. You know, if you have a newer loom, you might be a little better. But, you know, we've done some really big projects, so... These rainbow looms have taken more stress than I can promise you that they were designed to do. So just keep that in mind when you're building something like this and be careful. But it's still holding up. It's still going strong. So tune designs, you've definitely got an awesome product here because this has taken a lot of abuse as far as pulling and everything. And you guys stay away from those knockoffs. Tune put his heart and soul into this project, and, you know, it's still holding up with the extreme stuff that we do. So you don't want to be messing with those knockoffs that'll break apart on you when you're uh, building something like this. Because it would be, it's just, you know, it would be catastrophic to go through all of this work just to have your loom bust on you. And then you can't do anything, so. Alright, guys. Just... You know, I'm doing this, typically you work left to right, I'm just doing this to uh, make sure the pattern's going. I haven't gone up and done the, done the crosses yet. So, from here, let's reposition the camera so you can see. I have a lot of work and what I'm doing is trying to get you some room so I can show you. Okay, so we're, we're right here. So we're going to go in here and we're going to hook, we're going to go over that cross piece. And we're going to go up here, and then over, cross over here. Now remember these pieces here on the side, over here, those are just to hook to. So we don't need to hook those to anything just because they're just going to dangle over. And then we take this piece over, we're going to keep going up to the next crossover section. Then when we get to the crossover section, we take it over, and then we go back to the next side down, and we finish it down. Make sure you can still see this. Let's turn this sideways and then you might be able to get a better view. I just don't have a lot of room for the camera now with this big bunch of stuff back here. Right. And then when we get up to the piece that goes to the angle or, you know, angles over to the next side. We put that over, and then we come back down here and we keep looming this section down. Alright, so you've seen enough of that. I'm going to get it going, and if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll get back with you after I've taken this off the loom, or when I'm getting ready to take it off. Okay, guys, so what you see here, we've loaded the loom up. You know, we've done our cross, going this way and everything. we got our piece down there. But what I want to show you, again, is how we get this to go together. So let me get back. Let me zoom in, and then I'll get back with you.